guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on our Power Level account. And if you're like me guys, and you've seen the splash screen that came up today, that is right, it is time for the Abyssal Expedition. So the Vault of Time is currently up um, with the enrollment phase. Once the enrollment phase ends, you have, I believe, 24 hours until you actually go live into the Abyssal Expedition or the Vault of Time. Now, this is one of the most time-consuming events that we do have within AFK Arena if you're looking to do exceptionally well. Looking at the rewards, pretty decent rewards for even a casual player. I'm getting a couple chests out of here, but if you're looking to actually spend some time within AFK Arena or spend some time within the AE, Honorable is really the way to go, guys. But this one does come with a cost. It does cost 3,000 diamonds. You can see if you do hit Duke, you get those 3,000 back, which means that this Abyssal Expedition will actually be free. But if you do hit Prince, you get a bonus 3,000 diamonds. Now you also do get your Stargazer cards and you get your Time Emblems out of here, which is the reason why I would recommend, again, depending on your play style, um, I would recommend going Honorable. If you're going to log in probably at least twice a day, um, it would be kind of a general rule of thumb. A little bit earlier in the Vault of Time, you do have to log in with a little bit more frequency because a lot of the players move, a lot of the players are taking different spots. Once you do get kind of settled moving into probably the second zone, um, then you can, it, it's a little bit more lax because you're kind of saving stamina at that point and you're not making as much progression as fast. So again, depending on which way you're going. Now there is a guide over on Reddit that we're gonna be covering in this video from Warring. Um, it's been a while since I've seen a guide from him guys and I really wanted to cover it versus going through here and kind of reinventing the wheel. I'm just gonna cover the information that he put there, really break it down because I feel like a lot of the visual guides, there's a ton going on. And if you're not familiar with the Abyssal Expedition, it can be very overwhelming. So let's go ahead and get into the guide. All right, guys, so here it is. I'm gonna drop out the camera so we do have room and run through the guide. AE better starts and tips for newbies. Now, again, if you're familiar with the Abyssal Expedition, um, most players can also learn something from this. I'm gonna put a link to the guide down below. That way you can go ahead and access it. Um, I kind of bookmark it when I go through there with these guides, making sure that I'm kind of following it. So first step, and he does break it down really nice in this guide, which I love. Again, big shout out to Wolring um, for making these guides. Visuals are not my thing, guys. That is why I rely on Reddit and Discord and a lot of other players um, to really come up with these amazing guides. So slot your strongest team. Now, when you start the Abyssal Expedition, you will not have any relics. I believe you might start with one level one relic, um, but you do not start with more than that. Now, with that being said, guys, you only have a limited amount of slots. You can see you do only have two teams there. Since you're entering in there with no relics, you want your strongest team. So one of the most commonly used teams within here is, of course, right here, guys, it is the Eins team. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to slot in your five hero Eins team right here just like you see within the graphic once this team in its entirety runs completely out of stamina you are going to unslot them and you are going to swap them into the second one and once they are slotted in here you're going to have a 80 stamina refill on each of these because it is your strongest team guys now when you start the abyssal expedition Tier 1s should be kind of the target. Tier 2, if they're green or yellow. Tier 3, again, if they're green or yellow. Um, if they show up red, chances of you actually defeating that tier are very, very slim. Um, even on my account, I could beat some Tier 3s, but not all of the Tier 3s. And you don't really want to burn a ton of stamina on some of the places that you cannot take. Now, sub some for the Einscom, you can see we have Rowan. We have the original version of Taylene. They have Pharrell and they do have Alna in here um, for some of the subs, some of the changes that you can put in here if you do not have the full Einstein. team. Now, another one that is run that I don't think he included in here, guys, is Damon. Damon actually does phenomenal within this game mode. I actually ran him last time. Taking three tier threes with him were pretty easy. But the ultimate in, in taking these tier threes, guys, are right here. The Awakened version of Thane or the Awakened version of Brutus. Both of those can solo a majority of the content early within the Abyssal Expedition, literally just using one hero. And you can see he just used all the 80 stamina, leapfrog him to slot two, 80 stamina, leapfrog him to slot three, so on and so forth. Because again, instead of using one team of five, you're literally using one hero that has the power as an awakened hero to actually take slots and take 
um, tier one, tier two, even tier threes by themselves without relics, which is super broke. Now, if the solo doesn't work, and this is kind of a, um, a, a, a variation that you can use, you can actually swap Ulna. So you'll kind of follow the same formation, but you would run Thane and Ulna within this formation or Brutus and Ulna in this formation. Um, the big reason for that, guys, is Ulna with the 9 of 9 furniture is going to produce um, the immunity for the other side, which means even if you go into combat, you can't lose the, the other hero um, short term because of the immunity that Ulna provides, but it does limit the stamina that you do have in here. Those teams can get up to tier three, so better to farm the tier three since the beginning. The more in the higher level that you start at, the more essence you're going to get, making it easier to make progression through the Abyssal Expedition. So it is kind of a game, again, early when it opens, when it first releases. The faster and the better that you can come in here and you can take on the tiers, the, the better you're going to be because the essence will regen or start regen um, after I believe it is four hours once everyone gets in. But you also want to start getting stamina back on your heroes, which comes back at four per hour. Now, second step, feel, feel no fear of curses. Um, we ran Fortitude, the tank's Fortitude in season seven. Fortitude does seem to be the remainder in the same one that players are running within this Abyssal Expedition. So we're going to focus on the tanks. Which means, guys, when you do unlock the second ability within the tanking tree, um, the curses are nullified, which is super strong, guys. Tanks, again, very, very strong. Um, we're going to focus on tanks. Don't focus on mages or rangers. Um, rangers still do well, but not as well as the tanks were doing. So you focus till it's level three. So we use carries like Awaken Thane, Brutus, Ainz, Lucretia with the soul relic that unlocks at level three. So once you do get level three, you will have the soul relic, which means they will mirror whatever you have built within this tanking tree, which is again, the big reason why you wanna build it up. Um, and again, we'll talk about it in just a little bit, why this works incredibly well. Using the relic will let you use other classes other than the tanks, which brings us to step three, guys. And this is kind of the, the big one where it seems kind of broken. So comps for farming after reaching zero stamina with your slots. You can see, guys, a farming comp, you're actually going to be putting that little piece right there. Um, you, you're going to be using the Soul Relic right there on Ainz with double tank. Even here, guys, you have double tank. You're running Lucretia within this comp. Um, heavy investment because you do have to have the plus 30 right there on Granite. But even looking here, like I said, with Damon starting, this is definitely an alternative because you have triple tank right here. Taylene will be your damage dealer within this formation. But again, you're stacking relics on tanks, which works incredibly, incredibly well. Now, the super farming, just like we talked about, we have Brutus and we do have the awakened version of Thane. I soloed a ton of content. Again, the last Abyssal Expedition, just running Thane solo worked super super well once we got to a point um I, I did go through and swapped them out to different places this one i have thane and i have brutus so i'm going to see which one works a little bit better but again they do take a heavy investment to farm but you're limited um to the stamina you regenerate but you also do have 10 slots that you're kind of playing with that you can move them through but once you get to the point of the zero stamina you want to slot in 10 heroes guys the reason for that is you will start regenerating that four stamina per hour. Um, if the slot is empty, I'm, I don't think it regenerates stamina. If the slot is empty, it will just stay at zero. I, I could be wrong on that one, um, but I thought for some reason that it did not regen the stamina if you were not doing that. So slot Thorin, never touch him if he is three, um, 309. The Thorin cheese does work on the final boss, which is kind of broken. You can actually see him right there. So this would be your 10 man setup. When you look here, um, we have the three right here running together. And then we do have the three right here. And then of course the alternate comp, if you're running Damon and you're running Taylene and running Hendrick in there, um, it looks like they're running Torn in here. Um, Torn, I, I don't really recommend. I, I know he can scale pretty well, but overall guys, you have to have Torn invested in. Um, if not, he will not have the life leech to actually survive and he'll get kind of train wrecked if you do not have Torn built up um, with signature item and also with the furniture. Furniture, of course, going to give him that life leech ability to keep him alive. But you can see, guys, these work incredibly well. If you have some of the super farming comps, you could even change up the variation of this 
to do um you know a three and three it depends a lot guys and i know wool ring is giving you a couple options in here the reason for that is depending who you have invested in for instance i do not have the awakened version of taylene so this alternate comp i would automatically scratch off and i would go with probably one of these ulna um probably like the ulna stain comp down here because again i do not have ulna for the 10 that we're putting in here and again the thorn cheese works on the boss guys which is super super strong so coming up to the top after you rank up to barrett slot your best boss team uh, boss teams are on a different page which again i'm not going to go over that but i'm going to put the link to the guide right here is what he slotted you can see tank tank we do have um warrior warrior and then the twins which means that one of these are going to get your your special ability to actually level them up but you're running double tank which is nice example of what i chose the the last boss fight after testing never touch it so essentially with this comp you are going to get to the final boss and you are going to have them with a incredible amount of stamina when you do hit that final boss the wall farming in the second and underground areas be careful not to take tier eights Tier 8s at this time, guys, are a really high, high stamina commitment um, without having the relics to back it. Once you get to the boss, once you get much stronger, Tier 8s will be easy to take with the tank tree if you did not, um, if you have the relics built. Again, if you're looking at them early, it's going to be super difficult to get them through because you don't have the relics to take out those Tier 8s. Now try to get 10k. Now this is your hourly goal when it comes to Essence is 10k guys that is where you want to be by the time you're getting towards the final boss you should be at at least 10k with some relics you can get it by getting um seven t7s 14 tier 6 11 tier 5s and seven empty tiles from the last area former legendary relics um i take a couple more than this i never leave anything empty guys because my thought is if you're taking towns if you're taking villages if you're taking tiers um the empty slots, you can kind of play around with them if they're movement tiles. If you're running, I would stack these with probably just more tier fives or even one or two more tier sixes. Um, the legendary relics are incredibly difficult to get, which is why he says just get more tier sixes and tier fives. Um, the tier sixes and fives are easy to farm until you do build up the relics, which again, I, I wouldn't leave the empty tiles because even when you get to the final zone, guys, it is three teams and it is pretty expensive. To take some of the uh, lands in there remember getting more than just two seven tier sevens is so useless so much of a waste of stamina and even one tier seven is enough to be competitive um never try to get a tier seven you can't garrison because of course with how high the tier seven is if you can garrison you get a pretty solid boost in there now step six guys once you hit marquees which i know again this is the reason i said bookmark this um, you can see here is what it's going to look like. So we have our first team right here. Um, slot the other two boss teams. If you don't have a full team or lack options, you can slot the trios, duos, or solos instead. So you can kind of see what he built out here, guys. Not having all of the heroes maxed out will still work with formations. And some of these are actually buffers depending on the combination that you're doing when you get to the actual boss fight. And you don't want to use these boss comps. Remember to place your path, farm the teams to get to a zero after helping lighting up the crystal, farm the tier six and tier sevens, and help with the boss since some of them are trash on the final boss. We have to take out the trash, of course, so it's better to replace them, which are under 12 stamina. Should farm our way to the bosses fast when you light up one of the crystals. We need to light 50 crystals in order to start attacking the underground bosses. That's right, guys. A lot of players didn't realize that there was the crystal requirement. And then when you get to Duke or when you hit Prince, um, you can see the, the other slots right here that continue. Um, he does carry it into a lot of formations, again, on the next couple pages um, to, to really showcase what the guide has. Guys, come and look at it. Make sure you're following this, especially the first couple days. It can be incredibly easy to get through here because as you see, um, as you get to Duke with the Star of Dawn or when you get to um, Prince, you can slot in that extra team, which can make a big difference when it comes to the stamina and when it comes to the boss farming teams. 
So all right guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Just wanted to really showcase the beginning of this guide. Um, that way you guys can go over and check it out on Reddit. I know we have another, I believe, again, day, maybe two, until it is actually up for the Abyssal Expedition. So again, the link will be down below so you guys can check it out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.